everybody, Jay Crash here. Happy New Year. Let's run down my top 10 films of 2021. What an exciting year for movies. I can't tell you all the good stuff that came out this year. It was so refreshing to see so many great artists throw their cards on the table here and just go for it. We've had a lot of shitty, we've had a shitty year and a half or two years, let alone on the artistic front, but everybody just joined in the party here this year and it was so exciting. This was a really tough list for me to narrow down. There's a couple of honorable mentions that I'll tag on to the end of the video because it was really hard to narrow these down into the top 10. I watched a lot of movies this last year. Uh, I, I always watch a lot of movies, definitely more than the general public. And these are my favorites. You're gonna have the award season coming out here with Golden Globes, Academy Awards. And I just wanted to throw my two cents into the ring here. So let's get going. Number 10 is Nightmare Alley. This is Guillermo del Toro's new film noir. And he made A Shape of Water a couple years ago, actually won Best Picture. I really enjoyed that film. And I loved how del Toro transitioned over into making a classic film noir. This has all the components. It's a beautiful looking film, the art direction cinematography is just spot on here it's about a guy that joins this carnival and studies and perfects mentalism and then he kind of takes it to the next level it's a very thought-provoking deep film with great performances i absolutely love the look of this film and del toro really knocked it out of the park with this modern film noir all right, number nine is Lamb. This is an Icelandic feature film, subtitled in English. A really great surprise. This is a hypnotic film. It's a very quiet film. Lamb shows you, it doesn't tell you. And it's a very layered symbolic film that operates on multiple levels. You can dissect it down to a fable or you can get deeper into the esoteric elements of the film. I love the quiet nature of this film, the atmosphere, and what a surprise. I recommend that you go into this film blind because it is really an experience. It's lamb. Number eight is The Card Counter. This is Paul Schrader. Paul Schrader wrote and directed this film. He also wrote Taxi Driver, Raging Bull. I mean, here's a guy that's been around the industry for a long time, and this was a really great gambling movie. If you're into gambling films or into gambling like I am, you will definitely appreciate this film. But this film had more. It had extra layers to it. And I really loved how Schrader incorporated that into the story of this nomadic gambler that just travels around from state to state, town to town, casino to casino. He stays under the radar. And you sort of strip back the elements as the film progresses. Really great looking film. I love the cinematography of this film, the colors. There's a few very vibrant moments in it and just a really great character study. If you're into gambling movies, you definitely got to check this one out. It's one of the best gambling movies I've seen in a long time, The Card Counter. All right, number seven is Red Rocket. This is the new Sean Baker movie. Now, he did Florida Project, came out a few years ago to, to very high acclaim. I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was very well done. Uh, he just goes the next level here with Red Rocket. This is just an outrageous film about this broke porn star that leaves the industry from LA and goes back to his little small town in Texas. And... Baker has a way of using non-actors, quote-unquote, in his movies, and it really works, and he does it again here. 
a Florida Project, people st- still seem to gravitate towards that as the better film, but I thought that Red Rocket was really a step above for Baker. The main character, played by Simon Rex, he, he his name's Jimmy. He's the porn star that comes back to his town. What a performance. One of the best performances of the year. This film is funny. It's uncomfortable. It's cringy. It could almost be offensive to, to some people as you, you watch it, but I think this film was so bold the way Baker did this. The actor, Simon Rex, he was actually a former porn star. So, I mean, Baker has a way. You start out, this is a funny film. It, it's very charismatic, but as you travel through this movie, it strips back these layers and presents it in a way that isn't quite what you see on the surface. I love the backdrop to this film, the socioeconomic crisis that's going on under the backdrop of of a, a small rural Texas town with a factory and just the overall ambiance of this pitched up against the background of this character. It really worked for me. I liked Red Rocket a lot definitely check this film out all right number six is tick tick boom this is a musical about making a musical or getting a musical done and the film is based off the story of jonathan larson who was the writer and creator of rent and i'm not a huge musical theater geek But I do appreciate the genre. And this is a film for anybody who appreciates musical theater. It was directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is the creator, obviously, of Hamilton. And it's just a great film about Jonathan Larson and his struggles in getting this musical made. Fantastic performance by Andrew Garfield. He is just amazing. The songs, the music is great. And this one really touched a nerve with me just as an artist, a songwriter. And all the struggles that we go through to create was very resonant with me. I like this film so much. Really great stuff. I'd have to put him, Andrew Garfield, and Simon Rex up for best actor here. All right, moving on. Let's get into the top five. Number five is Power of the Dog. This is a film by Jane Campion. She did The Piano 10, 15 years ago. Excellent film. She hasn't made a movie since, and she really comes out swinging here with this. Performances in this film, the actors are outstanding, and what a great twisty storyline that this film takes on. It's a period piece based in the early 1900s in Montana about these cowboys and this dynamic that takes place in this family. I don't want to give this story away. It's a slow burn, but it develops and goes directions that you would not expect. Speaking of great performances, uh, Cody Smith McPhee is awesome in this film i think he could take home the best supporting actor role here all around great performances benedict cumberbatch kirsten dunst is in the film just a very well made film that takes you where you're not expecting to go and i love that about this movie all right number four is the lost daughter This is Maggie Gyllenhaal's debut at directing, and I got to tell you, she knocked it out of the park. I love Maggie Gyllenhaal, especially in her roles in The Kindergarten Teacher, which I thought was a great film, Crazy Heart. She's just a real great talent, and here she shows her direction capabilities. This is a psychological sort of mind-fucky thriller Olivia Coleman is the main actress in this film who does an outstanding job. Gyllenhaal captures so much here just in the way she persuades the actors to emit so much emotion in their expressions and in their countenance. 
I loved it about the film. Ed Harris is also in it. Really great to see him back. This is such a strong debut here. I highly recommend this film. It's very bold. It takes on subject matter that is kind of uncomfortable, but something, especially if you are a parent, that you can definitely identify with and relate to. It's The Lost Daughter. All right, number three, we're getting closer here. This is Old Henry. This is starring Tim Blake Nelson, and he's one of those classic character actors that you know who he is, but he's always kind of in the background of these films. Does a great job in the starring role. This is a Western, uh, one of the best Westerns I've seen in a long time. I love Westerns. I'm very critical of Westerns, but this film, it's concise, it's on point, and has one of the best twists at the end. Gave me chills. I love this film, Old Henry. You've got to check it out. Just what they did here, it's a short burn. It's like 90 minutes, just to the point, concise. What they did here on a smaller budget was outstanding. All right, let's get into the top two. Number one and number two were very tough for me to decide on, but I'm going to call number two is Pig. This is a debut film by Michael Sarnowski, and it stars Nicolas Cage. I absolutely love this film. I thought it was so unique, and it wasn't a perfect film, but in its imperfections, it gets pretty damn close to perfect. I loved the contrast of Nicolas Cage here and the defying of expectations that took place. Now, Nicolas Cage has been doing a lot of fucking, really, let's face it, bad movies lately, B-films, violent kind of things. And every now and then he comes out with something cool like Mandy. I enjoyed, but this film really went against the stereotype of what Nicolas Cage has been doing. He was spot on with what the film was trying to convey. And it's one of the most emotional films that I've seen all year, just so honest and true. And the way it kind of peels back these layers as the film proceeds, and you get to understand that this isn't quite the film I thought it was, and it really just delivers a great, deep, impactful punch towards the end. I love this movie, Pig. I thought it was outstanding. All right, number one, it's Paul Thomas Anderson's Licorice Pizza. This was the most fun I've had at the movies in a long time, probably since Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was another great movie-going experience. But Licorice Pizza just, to me, just ignited everything that I love about movies. It's Paul Thomas Anderson's new film. Of course, you know him from just the array of his range that he does. I mean, he, he's done Boogie Nights, There Will Be Blood, Hard Eight, Phantom Thread, I mean, you name it. I've heard this movie described as a rom-com. I mean, I guess you could kind of say that, but there's so much more to this. It's just a very deep film about growing up in relationship. It's set in the 1970s, the backdrop of the movie. It kind of meanders through the lives of these two characters. Great performances by Alana Haim. She is of the musical band Haim, one of the sisters. She did an outstanding job. And also uh, Cooper Hoffman, Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, is the uh, lead male role. And just a refreshing film. It was funny, the energy, the just the feeling that you got from watching this movie, like that there's something out there for you. I love the way it captured that, the innocence, the beauty of youth to, to just convey the possibilities. Just a great script overall. It could be a little, you know, they could have trimmed a little bit off this movie, but I'm not going to take anything away from PTA and what he created here. This was my my favorite movie of the year. Just a great experience seeing it. 
I urge everybody to see all these films on my list. They're all great in their own way. And just a strong year for films all the way around. A couple of my honorable mentions I'll put on here on the end. It was a tough cut. But I hope you enjoyed that rundown, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. And have a great 2022. And I'll see you on that highway.